I got it! Ah! I got it! <laughs> Hello? Yes? Yes? Sweet mother of double jeopardy backstroking and butterscotch. We're on our way. Who was it? The Girl Scouts lawyers again? That was the commissioner. You'll never guess which unduly famous TV personality made the most wanted criminals list this week. Phyllis Diller? Gavin McCloud? Wink Martindale? Close. Myra Stump, the darling hawk of daytime talk. Myra? As in America's mom? The woman who told Tom Hanks to get a haircut? Surely you jest. She's holding her audience hostage and giving them valuable gifts against their collective will. I don't normally endorse the use of the word dastardly, but this is clearly dastardly. I think. We've got to drive over to the station right away. We're at our earliest convenience. Great! I've been itching to bust some skulls since they canceled my so-called life. Welcome back, America, to day three and a half of my most special episode ever. You don't want to miss any of our exciting guests coming up this hour. Plus, everyone in the audience is going to be getting a lifetime supply of non-dairy creamer! We don't need non-dairy creamer. We need sleep. Oh, I see. You were all thrilled when I gave you cars, then all expense paid vacations, and then home entertainment centers. But now, after I worked so hard and sacrificed so much, you'd rather sleep? It's all about you, isn't it? I guess nothing I ever do is good enough for you. Maybe. Maybe we'll start using non-dairy creamer someday. That's more like it. You see, there's lots more fun to come, so stick around, America, and sit up straight. Nobody trusts a sloucher. Good old TV. It's the only way I still feel well-adjusted. Welcome back, America, to day three and a half of my most special episode ever. You don't want to miss any of our exciting guests coming up this hour. Plus, everyone in the audience is going to be getting a lifetime supply of non-dairy creamer! Help us! I bought that VCR at the supermarket. So you know it's a good one. Still smells like asparagus, though. What do you mean? The reception's perfect right now. Someone once told me that the contents of a lava lamp make an excellent hand cream. That was me. Which is why I haven't tried it. 2002 was a great year for calendars. I'm glad we stocked up. We've been going through them at a rate of about one a year since then. These donuts must be three months old. Don't throw that out! I'm saving it for a science experiment. You bet, little buddy. Hello? Jerk! Hubert doesn't look so hot, Max. He doesn't look any worse than he did two months ago. Remember our motorcycle trip through the Midwest? Just you, me, and the authorities from seven states. But those were quieter times. Remember our trip to the moon, Max? Like cottage cheese through a strainer, Sam. You continue to baffle me, little pal. Hello, is this the president? It is? Really? Well, thanks. That's all I wanted to know. Hello, Mista Pizza? Send over another gargantuan anchovy and hot sauce special, please. Hello, Max? Yes? Just checking. Sam, it's me. Open the window. I'm trapped in the ledge again. Sam, come on. I have to pee. And the PTA is here, and they're carrying signs! Hey Sam, it's me again. I found a way to solve all three of my problems at once. But I'm going to be needing bail. Hi Sam, this is your therapist calling. I have to cancel our appointment because I'm giving up the practice to go into publishing. Speaking of which, thanks for all your great material. The drawers are just painted on to make the desk seem useful. Nothing useful in here. How ironic! One of these days, we're gonna finish that game. I'm still working on getting the rest of the darts from the police impound.
Mr. Spatula's looking good today. Isn't he plastic? Where's the rest of the news collection, Max? It's a surprise! A very disturbed individual sits here. Twenty years worth of electric bills take up a surprising amount of space. Ah, yes, I remember that case. Particularly gruesome. When I got this thing, I thought it would be useful. Where else would we keep the pieces of paper that we're never going to look at again? Anybody home? Guess not. We should have Jesse James's hand appraised one of these days. I bet it's especially valuable because it's autographed. Our thugs and hoodlums file cabinet is almost full. Can I help it if I come from a large family? Ants are just like people, aren't they? Yeah, kind of cute from far away, but really scary when you look at them through a microscope. My toes are all a Twitter that we've gotten another case so close on the heels of the last one. Don't say a Twitter, Sam. Well, well, Myra Stump holding her audience hostage. You watch that particular bit of daytime fluff occasionally, don't you, Max? Whenever our TV's out of hock, for some reason I can't get enough of her sharp-toothed maternal ranting. Why do you suppose Myra's got her audience captive? Who knows? Last month, Charles Groton put his hand on her desk, and she hit it with a ruler. She's very strict. You're a lovable but essentially useless lump of fur and icky stuffing materials, Max. On the contrary, I can be a vital source of alternative insight into the problems that plague you. Well, there's that. Let's get going. You lead, and I'll follow haphazardly, shall I? Ah, Brady Culture's hair. It makes for an unwieldy but oh-so-enchanting memento of our first case in a long while. He howled like a sick wallaby when I shaved it off him. Good times. <laughs> hey, that was fun! Tempting sometimes, but I've become fond of the little guy. One way. One way, dead end. Street signs are such fitting metaphors for the human condition. Remind me to refill your prescriptions. Remember our old car, Max? I said I was sorry. Alien Love Triangle Times. Looks like they're sold out. Has been Brady Culture behind bars. He finally found a way to become famous. The police blotter. Do you remember how to get to the TV station? I think we usually drive there. In the car? I smell crime. I think that's grime. Let's go. Okay. It looks like candy, but I'm pretty sure it's fish tank gravel again. I've had worse. It takes me back to my childhood. What ho! 
Samuel? Maximilian? What the? You're probably wondering how I know your names. Not really. Psst. It's me, Bosco. What's with the slanted soup strainer, Bosco? Bosco? I know not that moniker. I am Lord Reginald Rumplebottom, Earl of Dukedom the Third. Sam, what language is he speaking? I'm not sure, Max, but I think it might be English. <gasps> no, really. What made you convert to British? It's because everybody's got an in for me, that's why! Yeah, we heard. I had to get a disguise to throw them off the trail. Oh, they'll never find me now. They wouldn't even know where to begin to look. Clever clogs! What sick forces of evil are bedeviling you this time? It's the skin bodies, man! They're after me! Skin bodies? Sounds like a pack of belligerent nudists. Oh no. The skin bodies are like skinheads, but ten times worse! True they're not a hundred times worse? Yeah, maybe a hundred times, maybe a million! These skin bodies, what exactly are they doing to you? They're stealing my, I mean, <clears throat> pinching, my shaving cream! Of all the things of yours they could pinch, why the shaving cream? So they can shave their bodies, of course. Of course. Not to be rude, but why isn't your fancy pants defense system stopping these skin bodies? Well, after the whole video delivery conspiracy, I figured I'd better build something to keep people from bringing stuff into my store. So? So, I needed to borrow some of the high-tech detecting parts from b -Ted. Meaning nothing stopping people from taking stuff out of the store anymore. Dash it all! I knew I forgot something! What did you say those skin bodies were doing? They're pinching my shaving cream! Hands in the air, Bosco. You're coming with us. Good heavens! What is the meaning of this? We're taking you in for masquerading as a man of class and distinction. What the devil? Surely you jest. Yes, surely we do. On the bright side, now you can add the police to your long list of paranoia-induced nightmare subjects. Pishaw, piffer, pishwash. We want to buy something. Hmm, yes, hmm, uh, quite so, quite so. Do you have any complimentary fresh garlic? No. Do you have any fine leather jackets? No. Do you have any gumballs the size of your head? No. Do you have any plus two plate armor of limitless squeezability? No. Do you have any Pez dispensers with the head of infamous Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa? No. Do you have any ketchup? No. Uh, oh, wait. Got you. Blast. Drat. Dash it all. What have you got? Well, there is still one kind of shaving cream the blooming skin bodies haven't got yet. Oh, yeah, I love shaving. That's funny. I've never seen you shave. I didn't mean myself. And I have a most peculiar device behind the counter. What peculiar device are you so eager to pawn off on us this time? It's the latest in Bosco tech innovation. A delightful invention I like to call a chemical-based voice modulator. Voice modulator? What's that? I do believe it's self-explanatory. We don't really have time to explain it to ourselves. Why don't you just explain it to us? Well, it alters the frequency of your voice molecules. Very useful, very useful. We'd like that voice modulator. That will be 30 shillings. Yeah, I left our shillings in my other pants. How much in dollars? Let's see here. Uh, 30 shillings would be about one million American dollars. A million bucks? No way are we giving out that many tickets. I think we'll have to find an entirely new revenue stream if we want that voice modulator. Worth every shilling, trust me, trust me. We'd like that voice modulator. <laughs> that will be one million American dollars. We'll be back later once we find a way to become millionaires. We'll take your last can of shaving cream, old chap. Splendid, spiffing, tickety-boo. Just bring it to the counter. Nothing for us right now. Indeed. 
Thanks, Bosco. Pip pip, honey nut cherry. What do we have here? Organ trader, self-loathing weekly, hot bunny. Oh, let me see that. Hot bunny? No, self-loathing weekly. We want to buy something. Quite so. Nothing for us right now. Indeed. One dollar lottery tickets, two dollars. I'm feeling lucky already. Nothing like a gaggle of security cameras pointed at a guy to make him feel at home. I'm comfortable with it because I'm uncommonly photogenic. Is that clock correct? Well, it's only got one hand, so probably not. No thanks. I brought my lunch today. Are those the same two weenies that were in there a month ago? Are you the same two weenies that were in here a month ago? Whip liverwurst. Want some? Absolutely not. I think it's the tinge of green that makes this coffee especially appealing. I take my coffee green, like my men. Sludgies. This week's flavors: bangers and mash. That's sausages and potatoes to you Yanks. Oh, good. For a second, I thought it was something disgusting. Max, I've got a great idea involving you, a microwave, and six feet of aluminum foil. Go on. Maybe another time. Not chose. They're mine. Not chose. Buy not chose. Free toilet brush with every purchase. Free toilet brush. I'm sold. You. I'll pass. Ketchup, mustard, and purple stuff. As vaguely referred to on TV. Stay out of the loo. It's knackered. Bathroom terror level. Red, extreme terror. Yellow, lots of terror. Green, probable terror. Tongues placed on freezer become property of Bosco. I got quite a few tongues that way. Say, Max. I am not getting in that thing again. It took me weeks to get the fishy smell out of my fur. Chilled and preserved fluids. I wonder if Bosco used the fluid sample I submitted. I hope not. Nothing like a gaggle of security cameras pointed at a guy to make him feel at home. I'm comfortable with it because I'm uncommonly photogenic. What did you think of Bosco's accent? Please, even Hugh Grant does a better British accent than Bosco. Just standing in this store, I can feel sugar and preservatives leaching directly into my bloodstream through my skin. Let's stay here a little longer. Sometimes Muzak makes me want to commit mayhem. Almost everything makes me feel that way. Let's do some shopping. Great. Special. Buy one, get one. What a deal! Nothing like a gaggle of security cameras pointed at a guy to make him feel at home. I could use a shave. I'll say. Your five o'clock shadow goes clear to your ankles. Hard up, pig! Dog! Pig dog! The skin bodies rule the streets! <laughs> Blimey, Bally! The little bladder did it again! After him! I mean... Tally-ho, fool! Tally -ho, fool. Hey, Bosco. The law enforcement here in the States really is pathetic. Tally-ho, I say! Fetch my shaving cream, you cads! We've got skin bodies to chase, Sam! Let's do some shopping. Great!
Where are we going, Sam? Hey! <laughs> the skin buddy hit me, Sam! After those rats. There they are! Let's get them! How do those laughably small wheels move so fast? You'll never catch us! The skin buddy hit me, Sam! Give up the shaving cream, skin buddy! The skin buddy don't give it to nobody! <laughs> Stop now, or we will take decisive disciplinary action! Never happen, happen! Shaving cream, skin body! The skin body don't give it to nobody! <laughs> Take the wheel, little buddy. I thought you'd never ask. Let's go. <laughs> the skin body can't be stopped! Shoot him, Sam! I'm trying, but they have good reflexes. Can't dodge my shots forever. Watch it! The skin, the skin buddies can't be stopped. Hey, the shaving cream! Okay, hold on tight, little buddy. Mommy! make anybody mad. Unless there's a reason, or it seems fun. Hey Bosco, we've retrieved your precious shaving cream. Jolly good show, jolly good! Now if you're wondering about the reward money, yes, we do accept personal checks and all major credit cards. No! As a reward for retrieving the can of shaving cream, I hereby grant you a can of shaving cream! Gee, thanks. Nah. Nope. Hey! Ah! Stop it! Watch out! Put that away! What are you doing? He's a crazy man! He'll kill us all! You'll be the death of us all! Don't make me come over there! He's got a gun, and he doesn't know how to use it! Why'd I ever get rid of B-Taz? Look, Max, liver and onions are still in town. Let's go see them again and again! This place used to be Lefty's tool rental shop. Good old Lefty. I'll miss him. You couldn't stand Lefty. You once poked him in the eye with a number three socket spanner. Exactly! Good times. Spin the Bottle Championship is coming up. I like when they do the sudden death round with the Molotov cocktails. We should go to Switzerland sometime, Max. Nah, they always jip you on the cheese. It's like half air. Feel like taking in some pro wrestling? I think I've seen that one. 
Hey, it's the Indie Angst Film Festival. What do they do? Show that second movie over and over again? The Crosstown Limited. Of course, it doesn't stop anywhere near here. Tampering with the mail is a federal offense, punishable by fine and imprisonment. As we found out after the incident with the garden hose. Ah, memories. Sam! Max! How nice to see you! I don't suppose you have any candid photos of little green men feeling frisky, do you? Yes. By which I mean, huh? It's my new career! I'm a tabloid publisher specializing in the thoughtful analysis of groundbreaking news of interest to myself and others like me. What's it called? The Alien Love Triangle Times. So you're a publisher now? What happened to psychotherapy? I've always had a fascination with the suppressed and the sensual, and for telling people too much about both. Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times is a logical extension of all my previous careers. Except maybe Vatican spokesperson. Are you doing any psychotherapy on the side? Only on space aliens. I guess that narrows your clientele quite a bit. No, not really. How about a quick analysis, for old times sake? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. Three. You're harboring feelings of guilt over previous feelings of remorse. That's so true. How about another quick analysis? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. One. You have boundless apirophobia. What's that? The usual. How about another quick analysis? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. Two. Sounds like inverse paranoia to me. What don't you mean by that? Mm-hmm. I thought so. How about another quick analysis? Oh, all right. Think of a number between one and four. Three and a half. You're selectively audio-averse. I don't like the sound of that. What was it you said about a photo? My new tabloid, the Alien Love Triangle Times, needs a cover photo of an extraterrestrial biological entity, or alien as the unwashed masses calls them, caught getting cozy with some of the locals. Sybil, I'd like the record to show that although I support you as a friend, your latest project makes my skin decidedly crawly. Me too, and I like it! So, you're looking for a cover photo of little green men canoodling, right? Yeah, though I'm kind of desperate at this point. Basically, I can use anything as long as there are three beings in the shot and at least one of them's an alien. It is the Alien Love Triangle Times, after all. Got it. There's nothing like good, hard-nosed journalism. You said it! It's time to find out the real answers to the real questions. Like what did those poor cattle do to deserve that? No! What do aliens do for romance? Do they love? How do they get their otherworldly thrills? By playing slots in Kino? That'd explain why they're always seen in Nevada. Have you learned anything interesting since you started this, uh, magazine? I learned why Elvis had such an otherworldly voice. Elvis was not an alien. Sure he was. He just wore makeup to cover his emerald green skin. Frankly, Sybil, this project is disturbing, as well as distressingly intimate. Like seeing Stephen King getting a hot butter massage. Oh, you saw last week's issue. Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Dr. Phil. Well, that goes without saying. Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Yes. Is anybody else an alien that we might not know about? Yes. We'll be back. Keep watching the supplies. That would hardly be sporting. Hey, 
you're fogging my glasses. Quit it. You look like you could use a shave. What? Whoops. Nothing. That may be the least relaxing sign I've ever seen. What about the one at the barber shop that says low fatality rate? I stand corrected. Hold all my calls, please. Hey, keep away from my intercom. Ah, the Tiki. Hold over from the days when you could sell all kinds of cheap crap without a successful children's television show. Envious? A little. <coughs> Can I play with that? No, it drives people crazy. Who? Me. Nice cactus. Saguaro? Vinyl. Hey, if you dip that in ink, you could do 30 tattoos at once. If I could scare up 30 customers at once, I'd still be in the tattoo business. Ah, taxidermy. The dead are truly the kitsch of the living. And vice versa. You're an unfathomable well of something, Max. It's eerily lifelike for a fake plant. Nothing useful in here. It's getting late. Hey Sam, if it's always getting later and later, then how come it's early sometimes? That's one of the great mysteries, little buddy. Is this the kind with aloe in the sheets for extra softness? Chloroform, actually. Some of my therapy patients used to get a little rowdy. I've got half a mind to stretch out for a little bit. I think you have to stretch the whole thing, or it rips. You baffle me sometimes, Max. She's got a story here about two hygienists from Walla Walla and an amorphous Saturnian slime mold. Is that the one where they walk into a bar at the beginning? Laundromat. But you're close. Impressive credentials. Thank you. Where's Diploma Mill College? It's in Battle Creek. Very reassuring. Max almost lost a finger in a fan like that once. Yeah, but it wasn't my own finger. This appears to be some sort of reproductive device. It's a mimeograph. I use it to print my tabloid. Skin art. Is that art for skin, or art made from skin? Your ideas are effervescent pustules, Max. Sparkly and disgusting. I think those might be iron-ons. Convenient and painful. A surefire hit with the average consumer. Max, let me ask you something. Sam, for the last time, it's I before E except after sustained gunfire. Are you getting taller, little buddy? Maybe. I've been doing ear exercises. Never mind. I don't! Where are we going, Sam? TV studio. Goody! Well, here we are, Max. The TV station with programs too old to be contemporary, too new to be retro, but consistently derivative enough to be popular. WARP. Television so mindless, you can't help but watch. Oddly quiet in here. Mysteriously so. Well, let's find this Myra character and smack some good old-fashioned sense into her. I don't care if we smack it into her or smack it out of her, just so long as there's smacking involved. You crack me up, little buddy. There's only one explanation for a propeller on the wall. Yes, this TV station is a giant flying battleship! Either that, or it's just a... Prop. Huh. Get it? 
I vote for the giant flying battleship. Need a broom, little buddy? I don't use brooms, Sam. I necessitate the use of them. I hope that's just a prop. I hope it isn't! It's got a falling star on it. Twinkle, twinkle, little star! How I wonder how you'll crash and burn! Uh, yeah. The Barrel Haven. From whence comes this storybook set? Clearly from a work of unparalleled artistic vision and emotional expressiveness. No wonder I haven't seen it. Hey, even the scaffold is just a prop. Yeah, from that show about the TV crew that solves crimes around the station using advanced forensics and overly dramatic reenactments? Come on, who ever heard of a crime at a TV station? Hey, Max. What is it, Sam? Any idea what cheap rip-off of an already lackluster show gets filmed on this set? Even Money says it's something tasteless or tawdry, but preferably both. Let's boogie, little buddy. Lights, camera, devil-barreled action. Hey! Actors only back there. But we're police. Yeah, I'm sure. Midtown Cowboys, that away. Once used for apples, now used for derrieres. Stand aside, casually attired stagehand. We're Sam and Max, freelance police. We've come to save some pathetic hostages from the clutches of... Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. Number one, I'm not a stagehand. I am the director. The director! Could a fool... Number two, we're no longer holding the auditions for animal cops with crippling mental disabilities and a lust for dance. Oh no, we're not actors. You got that right. I don't think I've ever seen worse acting in my entire life. And yes, I have seen Keanu Reeves' performance in Toast, the musical. Sam, I think my hypersensitive ego may need stroking. Don't look at me. Next? Who's next? You don't seem to understand. We're highly untrained police officers. Look, hats off for dedication, guys, but I'm just not buying the police act. I feel so invalidated. We're looking for Myra Stump, the darling hawk of- Do not mention that name in my presence. Which name? Myra or Stump? Either and or both. What's your beef with Myra? Let's just say Myra and I have creative differences. I'm creative and she isn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your question? You and Myra. Why the hate? Look, Myra runs her show her way, and I run every other show my way. If she doesn't want me on her set, I could care less. You mean you couldn't care less. If you could care less, then you do care some, which doesn't really... No, I was right. I could care less, because I care even less about what you're saying right now. Oh, burn! Quiet, knucklehead. What are you doing here, anyhow? What am I doing here? I'm holding auditions for Midtown Cowboys. What are you doing here? Midtown Cowboys? The critically panned but publicly adored sitcom about two cattle ranchers trying to make it in Midtown Manhattan? Yes, well summarized. You're hiring extras? No, I'm hiring the stars. The two main characters went on Myra a couple days ago and I haven't heard from them since. I need replacements ASAP. Sam, did you hear that? If we can pass one lousy audition, sitcom stardom will finally be ours! Rocketing to fame for the most insubstantial of reasons. That truly is the American dream. We'd like to apply for that instant stardom you promised? You want to audition? Well, if there were anybody else here, I'd tell you to forget it, but okay. All right! What do we do? I'm going to have you play a scene from Old Yeller. Tell me you've seen it. I'm not into horror movies. It's the classic boy gets dog, dog gets rabies, boy shoots dog story. Max, I want you to play the boy. Yes! Boy! That is so me! And Sam, you play the dog. Oh. Okay, Sam, ready. I need you to act like you've got full-blown rabies. Understand? What's my motivation? You're a mad dog! Now, show me, rabbit. Um... Grrr. No! Dig deep! You should be just... frothing mad! 
Hmm. Cut! What are you doing? Sorry, I'm not hiring a dog who can't even do a simple rabidity scene. I don't know what went wrong. I was feeling so rabid. You look pretty disease-ridden to me. Come back after you've taken a few thousand acting lessons. Hey, Max. What is it, Sam? Perhaps I should ask the expert. What's the secret to seeming rabid? You can't learn rabid, Sam. Either you've got it, or you don't. And Sam, you don't. Not yet, anyway. Let's boogie, little buddy. Lights, camera, double-barreled action. Hello again. Yes? Can we take another crack at that audition? Fine. Let's take it from the top. Ready, Sam? Show me rabbit. Cut! Quit stalling and act rabid. I don't know how I could be any more rabid. You have to be frothing at the mouth. Contract rabies if you have to, but don't come back until you can froth. Cut! Rabid, I said! I don't know how I could be any more rabid. Use a prop if you have to. You think Brother just magically grew fatter cheeks to play the Godfather? No. Come back when you can froth. Cut! I don't know how I could be any more rabid. Use a prop if you have to. Come back when you can make yourself froth at the bottle. Hello again. Yes? Can we take another crack at that audition? Fine. Let's take it from the top. Ready, Sam? Show me rabbit. Brilliant! Now that's what I call diseased. Thank you. Thank you. First off, I'd like to thank all the little people who... Zip it. Okay, Max. You've just realized your dog is walking death, and you'll have to put him down for the good of society. Really? You're sad. You're despondent. You're grief-stricken. Now, show me the emotion. Uh, boo-hoo? You call that emotion? I've seen Myra show more emotion, and she ought to be declared a national Botox reserve. Grief, I said. Give me grief. Uh... Cut! Then it's got to be the saddest sad performance I've ever seen. Is that good or bad? Bad. I'd recommend you try to think about dead puppies or something, but that's what the scene's about, and it didn't help. Come back when you can cry on cue. Hey, Max. What is it, Sam? Considering how much grief you've given me, you'd think you'd be able to give the director some. I can't help it, Sam. The thought of shooting anything just makes the twisted mass of tissue I call my heart go all a-flutter. I'll give you something to cry about. Let's boogie, little buddy. Lights, camera, double-barreled action. Hello again. Yes? Can we take another crack at that audition? Fine. Let's take it from Boy Gets Weepy. Ready, Max? Show me the emotion. Uh... Cut! Are you even trying to seem sad? I don't know if he can get any sadder. You'd better help him dredge up some tears, because I won't hire a rabbit who can't show some emotion. <laughs> Perfect. Now, the fateful moment has arrived. Despite your immense grief, you must put your beloved companion out of his misery. Okay. Uh-oh. <gasps> What demonic force possessed you to do that? The demonic force called acting, Sam. You should try it sometime. Good thing I had my anti-hypnosis helmet built into my hat, or I'd have one too many holes in the head. Bravo. Bravo! Such realism. Such authenticity. I was convinced you were actually shooting him. How did you do the sound effects? You don't want to know. The search for the Midtown Cowboys is over! You're hired. Head to the set next door and we can begin filming immediately. Let's hurry, Sam. We only have 14 minutes and 55 seconds of fame left. Hello again. Yes? I'm sorry, where's our sitcom being filmed again? Actors, it's through the door to the right. Get over there. 
See you later. This conversation is a wrap. Uh-uh. Hey, Max. What is it, Sam? Where to now, little buddy? We've got a one-way ticket to blatantly undeserved fame, just through the door on the right. Meet you there. All right, people, let's get the stage set up. The celebrity host will be here any minute. Oh, right. The crew's working on Myra. Stupid, no talent, fat face. Weren't you just... I think she just defied the laws of physics. Sorry, you'd be amazed how many times a day I have to do that. Things tend to be hectic here. Doesn't bother us a bit. Sam and Max, consummate professional actors, reporting for duty. <laughs> you said duty, Sam. I knew you guys were right for this show. Speaking of which, could you perhaps explain the show a bit? Okay, here's the drill. On Midtown Cowboy, you play a pair of cattle ranchers trying to raise a herd in an apartment in Manhattan. My Uncle Ernie did that, except it was pigs. And not in an apartment. I only see one cow. It's a small herd. You're struggling, okay? Okay. You've got this landlord, Mr. Featherly, who has a very strict no-cows policy. Devilishly inconvenient. I begin to see from whence the hilarity sprouts. Yes, Featherly is always barging in, and you try to hide the fact that you have a cow in the apartment. Lots of sight gags, usually something gross winds up happening. Simple enough? Great. Where's the script? Well, there's a slight hitch. The cow ate most of the script, so you're going to have to ad-lib the show. Ad-lib? Yes, make it up as you go. Improvise. Well, I guess our regular life has given us plenty of practice. Don't worry, you'll be working with Philo Pennyworth, who plays Featherly. He's a brilliant actor, classically trained, globe theater and all that. Just set him up to do something funny and he'll handle it from there. Check. Anything else? Actually, yes. We did save one line from the script, and it's really important to work it in, because it's the product placement that pays for the whole show. One of you will have to save the line. Me, me, pick me! All right, Max, your line is this. Better get the serious toothpaste. I like it already. There's a lot to learn with this TV business. Give me the lowdown on the show one more time. Midtown Cowboys is about two cattle ranchers raising a herd in a Manhattan apartment that has a strict no-cows policy. Your basic visual hijinks and occasional gross-out humor ensue as they concoct elaborate ruses to keep their cow hidden from their landlord, Mr. Featherly. Remind me what that charmingly peculiar line was that you wanted Max to say? Better get the serious toothpaste. Oh, yeah. We're as ready as we're ever gonna be. Let's start taping the show. Okay, now remember, your landlord's at the door, and you don't want him to know you've got a cow in there. Ready? Action! They probably had it a cow. Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow! Let there be light. Hey! Goodness, who left this line Open here? up! Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow! This could use some sprucing up. Hey! Whatever happened to our can of spray paint? I refuse to answer on the grounds Open that up. I may incriminate both myself and a prominent local politician. Open Say no more. I know you're hiding a cow! Just a second, Mr. Featherly. Hey! Open ah, up! Nature. Open up in there! I know you're hiding These are all the Sarai. Who decorated this set? English majors working hey! for peanuts, as usual. Competitive horseshoe skipping is a Open thrilling up! test of accuracy, strategy, and strength. Open Even more so there. if the horses are still attached. Some say that's the only way. Hey! How convenient. This way we can shoot a TV show about people watching a Open TV up! show. And if the show they're watching is the show of themselves Open watching, the that. universe could I fold in on itself and explode! Cow. Best leave it turned off, then. Hey. I don't care if it is just a prop. I'm not touching that with my bare hands. Open up! Open up in there! I know you're hiding a cow!
All right, I know you've got a... Oh, for pity's sake, this will never work if you're not even going to try to disguise the cow! Cut! Amateurs. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. I shouldn't fool with the set while we're not taping the show. Let's have another go at that scene, shall we? Okay, now remember, your landlord's at the door, and you don't want him to know you've got a cow in there. Ready? Action! They probably had it a cow. Open up in there! I know you're hiding Let a cow! Let there be light. Hey! Open up! Quick, do something fun. Open up in hey, there. comedy's I hard know work. You're hiding a cow. Hey! I don't think cows are in season. Open up! Open up in there. I don't want to make anybody you're mad. A cow. Hey! Open up! Open up in there! I know you're high- Aha! I know you've got a- Well, well, well! Who's your guest, boys? I'd like to introduce you to my good friend, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> hey! Colonel Sanders! What? Cut! No, 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 no. You've gone entirely too far. Comedy is comedy, but this... this is monstrous! Sorry, I wasn't thinking. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. It's jolly old Saint Nick. It is? <laughs> Ooh, Santa! I want a new semi-automatic pistol with armor-piercing bullets, laser scope, and a picture of Jennifer Lopez engraved on the handle. It's not really Santa Claus, Bothead. You're shooting a TV show, remember? Cut! Please don't say cut. That's my job. How am I expected to create art if you're not even going to try to perpetuate the farce? He's right, guys. You can do better than that. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. This is a cow, hastily decorated with some shaving cream I happen to have in my pocket. Who knew shaving cream was such an important theatrical tool? Cut! This is my octogenarian uncle, Griswold, a retired chimney sweep from Lowell, Nebraska. Now he travels the world chasing cyclones in a mobile home. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. I'm something of a twister buff myself. Ever since I saw the Wizard of Oz when I was a boy. Have you heard the one about the three firemen and the football? <laughs> Please. This isn't that sort of a show. Save it for Myra. Cut! <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Pretty ingenious disguise, eh? What the? First you disguise the cow, then you tell me about it? Cut! Better get the serious toothpaste. Hey, that's my line! Oh, cut! Hey! I'm afraid you've delivered the sponsor's line at a comically inopportune moment. Wait for me to do something that might call for that line to be said. Gotcha. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. This isn't that kind of show. This is a funny show, not a sad one. At least in theory. Care for a shave, Mr. Featherly? No. Shaving doesn't work too well on my skin, unfortunately. Say, what's this? <laughs> I I'm sorry, what was that you said? He said moo. A philosophical musing on the deeper meanings of the shallower things. I see! I'm sorry, I'm just not sure where we're going with this. Can we start again? 
cut! <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. She said move. Cows do that. Oh, for cut! He said meow. <laughs> Arthur Griswold thinks he's a cat. He's awful big for a cat. Just be thankful he's not in heat. Uh-huh. He said moon. As in, the cow jumped over thee. I mean, what? Cut. Please, try to remember that your characters are attempting to hide the true nature of the cow. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. He said mood, meaning, uh... Um... He said moolah. Well, I never! Never? Never? Try saying your line now. Oh, uh, better get the serious toothpaste. No, no, cut! You've got to work that line in when there's a reason! <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was. Can I offer you an empty plate? What bunch of plate with no food on it? It's brimming with opportunity. No thanks. Open up in there. I know you're hiding a cow. There we go. Life of the party. Aha! I know you've got a... Well, well, well. Who's your guest, boys? Surely you recognize Abraham Lincoln, talented tap dancer and 16th president of the United States? His hat fell into a bucket of bleach this morning. My goodness, President Lincoln! I didn't even know you were still alive! You know, I had an excellent idea for the redesign of the penny I'd like to tell you about. This is the crown prince of upper thrombosis here in the U.S. on a fact-finding tour. Note his excellent ceremonial headgear. Huh, a prince? Golly gosh, I don't think I've ever met a real-life prince before. Of course, I am descended from royalty myself. On my mother's cousin's side, it was the back of the... It's the cow we've been raising here in the apartment with a lampshade on its head. We put it on there to fool you into thinking the cow was someone else. Caught! This is the French chef we hired to satisfy our inexplicable, insatiable craving for omelets and duck a la lava. And frog's legs. I like mine extra crispy. Oh, a French chef, eh? I love French bread and, and French fries. I went to Gay Paris one time myself, you know. It was back in my army day. Say, what's this? I'm sorry, what was that you said? He said Mougou Gaitan. It's a French dish the chef has just made. Whoa, super! I'll try some of that. Where's the plate? I can't help but feel this is all terribly wrong somehow. Interesting. That's one word for it. Hmm. There's a familiar flavor. Fennel, maybe? Kentucky bluegrass, I think. <laughs> this moo moo whatever stuff is really good. Uh, what's it called in English? Cow pie. <laughs> really? Well, that's funny. It sounds just like... <laughs> Now? Now. <clears throat> Better get the serious toothpaste. Zoom in. And cut. That was comic full. The network is going to love it. Naturally. I'll be in my dressing room refreshing my muse. Don't call me for at least an hour. Nice work, you guys. Here's a clip for your reel. Thanks. <sighs> Let's get the set back the way it was.
Hello again. Hi. What do you want to do now that we're big shot TV stars? Let's destroy our promising careers with a staggering cyclone of self-absorption and hedonism. Or we could try to get on the Myra show. That would be fun too. This place kind of reminds me of my college apartment. Haphazardly decorated with unfortunately colored dumpster recoveries? I think it's mainly the missing wall. You know what's wrong with television today? There's no reality show where public officials are forced to eat bugs for their corrupt misdeeds? It's like you can read my mind. Let's go. Okay. Hey, bossy. Hi, Mom. Look, Max, there's the door to Myra's set. Let's get in there and liberate her literally captive audience. Sam, forget the hostages. There's somebody famous. It's Hugh Bliss. Who, Bliss? No, Hugh Bliss. Inventor of prismatology? Help millions unlock the power of their personal color spectrums? Right. The stage magician turned happiness guru. Like we didn't have enough of those already. I want to meet him. Fine. But if he magically pulls another rainbow butterfly out of somebody's ear, I'm leaving. Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Yeah, we know. And you are Sam and Max, freelance police. <gasps> How do you know? Do you believe in magic? Because I do. So, Hugh Bliss, what brings you to WARP? I, too, am here to meet Myra. <gasps> How do you know we came for Myra? Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, don't you see? I can read your mind. As the resident Doubting Thomas of this crime-fighting duo, I consider it my civic duty to say, prove it. Okay, think of something, anything. Pennies on the eyes of a dead mime. Well? I must have been silently mouthing the words. Really? Think of something else. <laughs> Hugh Bliss is a big fat charlatan. Was he right? Big deal. Everyone thinks that. Oh? Think of something else. <laughs> 6,373,411.98. Sam? Lucky guess. Was it? Think of something else. Enough of this ridiculous farce! Stop it. <laughs> do me! Do me! Oh, oh my! And that's unspeakably depraved! Yeah, you got it! Wow, you're amazing. What's your business with Myra? I'm to be a guest on her show, silly. Yeah, silly! I'm spreading the word about my new book, Emetics, the Handbook for Multicolored Happiness. Take a copy when you leave. Can you just give us the ten-word summary instead? We're on a pretty tight schedule. Ten words? Oh my! How about, prismatology is the answer. Unicorns are pretty, and rainbows too. That's ten. What's the story on this prismatology flapdoodle? Prismatology is only the greatest intellectual, emotional, and spiritual revolution ever to grace this fair planet. Thank goodness we have someone who can give an impartial assessment. Shh. Tell us more. Join Prismatology today, and you too can experience the magic of true bliss. That goes against everything I've ever hoped for, and yet now I'm strangely attracted to the notion. Snap out of it, little buddy. We've got a case to solve. Dazzle us with a feat of ledger domain, why don't you? Okay, I'll show you the magic of prismatology in action. Pick a color, any color. Ochre, ochre! No, mauve! Burnt sienna! Uh, how about a color I've heard of, hmm? Pick a color, as long as it's red, green, or blue. Red, Fred. Ooh! 
I know what you're thinking. Is it real or is it illusion? Say, Hugh Bliss, can we get a picture with you for our scrapbook of instantly forgettable memories? Splendid idea. I wish I'd thought of it. Oh, and in fact, I did. He, hence the camera. Now gather round. But how will you take the picture? By magic. Okay. Say, chocolate-covered puppies. Chocolate-covered chocolate -covered puppies. So where's the picture, magic man? Oh, my. I seem to have misplaced it. Hmm. Check your pockets. Maybe I left it there. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your little joy fest, but I've got a situation here. Never fear, pretty lady. Hugh Bliss is here. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, our game show host went on Myra hours ago, and he still hasn't come out. Think you can fill in till he gets back? Can a butterfly fly? Yes, it can. Oh, what do I do? When a contestant comes to the podium, just read him a question from the card. Then, when he gets it wrong, insult him and tell him to get off the stage. Oh, no, no. Prismatology teaches us to love everyone, no matter what. Right, just read the cards. Okay. I still love you. <sighs> No dice. see how you can sing and be a judge. I don't think the public would swallow that. Hey, Sam, do my eyes deceive me, or are those our formerly hypnotized former child star acquaintances, the soda poppers? Sweet jellyfish paste on a stick, you're right. What are the odds? Could we find another judge? What about one of those guys? Hmm, I don't suppose either of you would be interested in being a judge on Embarrassing Idol, the hot new show where we make uncomfortable entertainment out of people's misplaced faith in their own singing ability. Oh, me, me! I promise I'll be completely unbiased in my abuse of the contestants. Fine, fine. Take a seat. Goody! I get to sing! Welcome back to Embarrassing Idol. The judges are chomping at the bit, so say hello to our first contestant, Peepers. <clears throat> Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Well, that was a bit sloppy, but I particularly liked how you hit that high note. That always impresses me. I think you'll get my vote. I'm definitely voting for you. After all, you are my brother. Very impressive. You sound almost exactly like a sick cat being dragged through rusty farm machinery. But this is a singing contest, so I think I'll have to vote for someone else. Um, is there anyone else? Not so far. Yeah! Judge looks good on you, Max. Thanks! I hope it comes with lunch. Seems like a pretty cushy job you've got there. I hope somebody else comes to sing soon. I've got scathing insults and bombast that are itching to claw their way out of my throat. How is that any different from normal? It'll be on TV! Don't let your passion for overzealous criticism get in the way of our primary goal here, little pal. I already forgot what that is. Myra Stump, holding the audience hostage? Oh, right. Sometimes my sponge is a little leaky. A fact I know all too well. I think I'll poke around and look for clues, or craft services crawlers, or both. If you poke up some crawlers, I want six. Last time we saw you, you and your diminutive former child star brothers were in the thrall of a megalomaniac hypnotist with bad hair. What have you been up to since then? Well, after you hit us over the head... Repeatedly! Our careers have taken an upswing. Clearly. Hey, being a judge on Embarrassing Idol is a tremendous opportunity. I'm feeling the magic already! 
What can you tell me about this contest you're judging? Not much to tell. People sing, we judge them. You want to know more, ask the director. We judges don't have to concern ourselves with operational details. Tell me about the criteria you use in judging a singing contest such as this one. I'm a stickler for technical proficiency. Usually I look for a high note. Someone who can hit a really high note always impresses me. I see. If you'll excuse me, I've got some lines to color outside of. It's your life. Remind me what it is you look for when you're judging a singing contest? High notes. I like it when people can sing really high notes. High notes, right. Now I remember. If you'll excuse me, I've got some lines to color outside of. It's your life. Tell me, old judge, what gruesome qualities do you look for in a singing performance? Fraternity! I'm voting for peepers no matter what! He's my brother! The one who didn't forget my birthday today, I might add! I said I was sorry! Remind me again how you go about judging a singing performance? I listen very carefully to the tonal qualities of the singer's voice, and then I vote for my brother Peepers. Commendably impartial of you. Happy birthday! Thanks! I'm glad somebody remembered! I said I was sorry! What more do you want? A treat would be nice! Isn't this also St. Boniface Day? Patron saint of carnivorous plants and spiky things? I think that's next week. What kind of perks go with this gig? Do you get fancy dressing rooms and candy sorted by color? Ooh, craft services food! Have them bring me a roasted Canada goose stuffed with lightly bruised olives, please. Not likely. I ordered a cake for my birthday, but they never brought it. I think the craft services crew all went in to watch the Myra show, like everybody else. All we got was a basket of tomatoes! Ugh. What kind of preposterously un-American weasel are you that you don't like tomatoes? I like them just fine, but they don't like me. What do you mean? I once spent 12 hours in the bathroom after mistakenly eating a cucumber that was sitting next to a tomato on the plate. Say no more. Can you eat those little cherry tomatoes? They're small. No! No tomatoes, tomato juice, tomato paste, nothing, or I'll be out of commission for hours. Enjoy your judging. Catch you later. Uh-huh. What's with the pool of water? It's acid, Brain Freeze. Don't you ever watch the show? Fascinating. Well, well, peepers, you underdeveloped former non-psychotherapist you. What a treat to run across you again. I'm not sure if I ever properly thanked you for hitting me over the head recently. Repeatedly. No gratitude necessary. Just doing our jobs. Sure! How do you manage to hit those eardrum-scarring high notes? If you're implying that I use any artificial vocal enhancements, I don't! What you hear is pure peepers! That's almost exactly what I would have said. Really, is there any trick to hitting the high notes like you do? Look, I told you, I don't use any artificial vocal enhancement and I resent the implication. I have a gift, that's all. Your lyrics have an intriguingly vapid quality. Did you write them yourself? Of course! Any similarity to lyrics from other wildly popular songs is meant as homage, not theft. I'm dying to know, is there any truth to the rumors about lip-syncing on the old Soda Poppers TV show? We only did that on the released version. I'll leave you to whatever it is you're doing over here. Good luck! Wah! <laughs> Why did you do that? I'm not really sure.
That would hardly be sporting. No can do. Nah. Once used for apples, now used for derrieres. Can I look at these? Sure, take them! I've got them memorized! Am I blue? Who are you? Can I fly? Very impressive. Is that your mug? No, it was here when I got here, last week! Ew. That's quite a little science experiment. Hi. Hi. You got this stage set up awfully fast. You must have an army of minions to do your bidding. <sighs> no, it's pretty much just me. I used to have a stagehand, but she went to watch the Myra show. All the more impressive, then. Sawing the hole in the floor was the hard part. What can you tell me about the show you're shooting here? Embarrassing Idol, standard drill, amateur singers with delusions of ability perform in front of a camera. Judges heckle them, and the public gets sick pleasure out of watching the carnage. Can I be a contestant? I often sing in the shower, and hardly anyone complains. Sure, we're pretty desperate for contestants at the moment. We had more, but they went in to watch the Irish show and we never saw them again. Highly suspicious. Can you give me some kind of insight into the arcane workings of the judging? It's pretty simple. All the judges have to agree on a winner. That's all there is to it. What kind of arbitrary criteria do they use to make their decisions? That's up to the individual judges. I channel the spirit of Hammurabi, the ancient Babylonian ruler. Then I pick you, Sam. Thanks, little buddy. Remind me one more time how the judging works on this show. All the judges have to agree on a winner. Oh, yeah. What allegedly valuable prize is bestowed on the lucky winner? The winner gets a standard exploitation recording contract with a major label. If you're going to be exploited, be exploited by the best. Remind me what the prize is again? It's a recording contract. Of course. How silly of me. Can I take another stab at singing? I'm not sure my finer qualities shown through on that one. Sure, why not? It's not like there are other contestants lined up and slobbering. That seems clear. Thank goodness. What's it like working with the soda poppers? Oh, the usual. They prance around to make unreasonable demands, but they knuckle under because they're desperate to be working at all. Same as the rest of us, really. Your bleak outlook is oddly refreshing. Well, I'm sure you're very busy. You got that right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. Hello. I'd like to do a little song I call... Love has a thorny backside. <coughs> Chomping on a crunchy silver spoon. Thinking about the rings on the great racket. All the girlies hear me and they swoon. And let's hear from our judges. Bravo! Your wobbly tenor is way better than Peeper's shrill squawking. Your stylings are quite interesting, but I noticed you never really hit a high note. Peeper's is still getting my vote. You sing beautifully, and your lyrics are enchanting. But Peepers is my brother, so I pretty much have to vote for him. Oh. Remember, folks, on Embarrassing Idol, the decision of the judges must be unanimous. Stay tuned for more exciting action after this. And we're cut. It's okay to sing again if you want to, by the way. Could improve your chances.
that's nice, Sam, but not quite what I was looking for. Nobody will buy this guy as an alien with that color skin. Nuts. Raisins! Hi, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. I challenge you to change colors again. Okay, pick a color. Any color. It's not easy being green. Oh, but it is with magic. Ah. How about another picture, you bliss? How about this? Instead of a new picture, we'll just recycle the old one. Save the Earth. Sure, whatever. Gather round. I challenge you to change colors again. Okay, pick a color. Any color. Return to your usual albinic hue. Wow. Bye! It's polite to knock. You do know we're taping a show here. Great day in the morning. It's Myra Stump herself! Yourself. How about letting your hostages go now? What do you say? Hostages? They're my guests! You know, if there's one that fries my burger, it's the rampant victim culture in American media today. Oh, boo-hoo! Myra's audience all got luxury minivans. Now they have to worry about where they're going to park. Bah! I know what you mean, Myra. It's like I'm always telling people, don't think of it as a bullet wound. Think of it as a transfusion opportunity. Seriously, we're officers of the law, more or less, and we'll have to insist that you free the hostages. Of course. Just as soon as the show's over. And when is that exactly? Oh, who can say? We still have so many gifting opportunities. I just found a year's supply of industrial strength soap backstage. I think I'll give that away. Or else have a valuable lesson on curing potty mouth. Can we come in and see the show? Can you? Don't you mean... Uh, may we come in and see the show? That's much better. No, we're at full capacity. The only people getting in now are famous people who are appearing on the show. Can't... may we appear as guests on your show? I excel at talking about myself! Are you famous? Perhaps. In an internet petition or there ought to be a law kind of way. Not good enough. I'll need evidence of your explosive star power. I blew up a public restroom last week. I want to see a copy of your recording contract, for one thing. Well, what if we... Recording contract and a clip from your hit TV show. You're not anybody these days if you don't act and sing. Recording contract, TV clip. Piece of cake. No cake. I'm on a diet. But I will naturally need evidence of the latest juicy scandal you've been involved in. We have to be scandalized? Of course! What kind of show do you think this is? Are you sure you want us to answer that? Look, it's very simple. Show me a recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a scandal, and I'll squeeze you in. Oh, is that all? As it happens, we brought a clip of our wacky hit sitcom, Midtown Cowboys. We're the stars. Well, I'm certainly impressed with how far standards for entertainment have fallen in this country. Um, thanks? But... You're also going to need a recording contract and a nice, juicy scandal to be a guest on my show. Remind me what your requirements are for guests on your show? Of course, dear. I'll need to see your recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a juicy scandal. What if we have our own video game? Video games? Ugh! Those things will ruin your eyes. They're awful. Your eyes look a little spirally. Are you feeling all right? Of course I am, sweetheart. By the way, when was the last time you brushed your teeth? And you should really be flossing. You certainly sound like your normal self. But why are you keeping everybody in there? I'm just doing what I always do. Slave and toil to put on the best show possible. It's just, after opening presents from well wishes, I felt so compelled to make this show extra special. Don't be alarmed but I'm beginning to suspect that you might be hypnotized. Don't be silly. Hypnotism is just an excuse people use today to abdicate responsibility. I hate how this country's become a bushel of Bill and Betty brainwashies. 
Hypnotized or not, that sounds like Myra's patented blend of lovingly cutting criticism and charismatic know it all -atry. Are you sure you're not hypnotized? Of course not. I'm just inspired. And even more so than usual. I'm gonna go get my autograph book. We'll be right back. It's too nice to stay indoors. You boys should go play outside. And you should stop making that face, dear. It'll stick if you're not careful. What face? Myra exclamation point. Myra percent sign ampersand dollar sign would be more like it. Now, now, no swearing in longhand, Max. This is a family channel. Director. Sam, I've just deduced a vital piece of information in the case. That is where the director sits. And people say you've been mailing it in. I think Myra Stump might be hypnotized. That would explain... What would that explain, Sam? It might explain why she'd do something weird, like hold her audience captive for three and a half days and try to give them stuff. It's true. Generosity isn't natural. It's even kind of scary. Who do you think would want to hypnotize Myra? Almost everybody? We've got to get onto that set and find out what's going on. I think this Hugh Bliss guy is a bit of a wacko. True, but he's a colorful wacko. Well, we've got things to do. And things to be! In my experience, shooting beloved happiness gurus tends to be frowned upon by the general public. <laughs> There's no crying in prismatology. Oh, Hugh Bliss, we've got something for you. No, 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 no gifts. All I need is love. Sweet love. Emetics. Life troubling your digestion? Reality blocking your passages? Expel your troubles with Emetics, the handbook for multicolored happiness. Hmm. Already got a copy. I read it every morning on the can. Multicolored happiness indeed. So how does this game show work? Did you just ask me how a game show works? Uh... A contestant comes to the podium, the host reads them a question, they get it wrong, and they leave. Just one question? More time for commercials that way. Look over there. It's Myra. <gasps> Where? It's written right above the door. I don't have time for this. See you later. That's a wrap. I don't want to make anybody mad. Unless there's a reason, or it seems fun. We've got a contestant, people! Hit it! From somewhere deep within the bowels of WARP, it's Who's Never Going to Be a Millionaire? With special guest host, Hugh Bliss. Hi, I'm Hugh Bliss. Our first contestants are a pair of professional freelance police officers. They enjoy firing their guns randomly and running over things. Please welcome Sam and Max. Listen, Sam, they love us. Welcome. You know the rules. If you can answer even one question correctly, you'll walk away a millionaire. Start loading the armored cars, Hugh, because my brain's stuffed with enough worthless trivia to power a small Chilean village for decades. It's true. Okay, are you ready? Oh, happy day. It's an easy one. If a man sets out from the Horsehead Nebula in a spaceship traveling at thrice the speed of light and his father leaves from Rigel 2 at the same time going half the speed, how many nanoseconds will it be before time paradox causes the first man never to have been born? I'm gonna go with my gut and say, Hugh Bliss. 
I'm flattered, but no, that is completely wrong. You lose! This is an outrage. I demand a recount. We do have a fabulous consolation prize. A copy of Emetics by me, Hugh Bliss. No thanks. I'm content to leave with just my burning shame and newfound sense of inadequacy. Okay! Find out which poor schmuck will be the next to blow his chance at millions right after these messages. That game show is a killer. I don't think we're ever going to win a million dollars. We could if they'd ask easier questions. Well, obviously, bird brain. Well, we've got things to do. And things to be! We've got another contestant! Hit it! Welcome back! Our next contestants are... These guys again! Okay, are you ready? Here's the question! What is the mass of a solid dodecahedron composed of unrefined nickel three decameters to the side rounded to the nearest milligram? I'd have to say... chimichanga. Judges? Uh. Oh, I'm sorry. No. You lose! We'll be right back after these messages. We've got another contestant. Hit it! Welcome back. Our next contestants are... These guys again. Okay, are you ready? Here's the question. How many grains of sand are there on all the beaches in the world, discounting those currently used in sandcastles? I'd have to guess... Patty Duke's evil twin cousin. Oh, so close, but no, you lose! We'll be right back after these messages. We've got another contestant. Hit it! Welcome back. Our next contestants are... These guys again. Okay, are you ready? Here's the question. What is the meaning of life? I'm not sure, but I'll say false. That's not really a valid answer. You lose! We'll be right back after these messages. Hey, a perfect fit. That's where I'd stand if I were the host, which I'm not. Who's never going to be a millionaire? Good old W-A-R-P, where no horse is so dead they can't beat it a few more times. We've got another contestant. Hit it! Welcome back. Our next contestants are these guys again. Okay, are you ready? Hmm, the question is, am I blue? No, Hugh, you're not blue. Oh dear! Oh me, oh my! That's absolutely right! Yes. Congratulations! You're a millionaire! We're rich! Filthy rich! We just went bankrupt, so we will not be back after these messages. I don't believe it. Well, this is awkward, but we don't actually have a million in cash. Sweet mother of all quiz show scandals. We'll have to give you a million dollars worth of food stamps. They're right over there. Hold on. Can you buy deep-fried licorice ropes with food stamps? We'll take it. One, two, three, 174, 175, 999,999, ,999, and a million.
Let's go spend it, Sam. It's burning a hole in my pocket. It's putting quite a bulge in mine. See you later. That's a wrap. That's where I'd stand if I were the host. Can we play again? Well, you bankrupted us, so I'm thinking no. What's the story with this show? Cooking Without Looking? It's a cooking show aimed at motorhead bachelors who have never seen the inside of a grocery store. Is there a big demand for that? You'd be amazed. Where's the host? Is he in watching the Myra show? No, he's one of the few who isn't. He got food poisoning while he was taping last week's show. Right in the middle, in fact. Was it gruesome? Yes, and unfortunately, this show goes out live. Can we get a tape of the show? This one? No. It's broadcast live. We don't tape it. How do you do that teleportation trick where you're always everywhere ahead of us? Trade secret, honey. How do you keep it so clean in here? The complete absence of anything resembling food is helpful. Aren't there fruits or vegetables of any sort around here? Just the crew. Ha! <laughs> I never get tired of that one. Okay, actually, no. We strive for realism, and the average bachelor kitchen doesn't contain any natural plant life except mold. See ya. Probably. Does this place remind you of anything? No. Wait! Yes! This is the kitchen set from Hopalong Placidly! They probably got a good deal on it after the Pancakes for Play scandal. I miss that show and its masterful constant use of miscommunication as a comic device. Do you smell something burning? Sorry. Oh. What'll we do now? Make food? Brilliant. Let's accomplish things now. Oh, all right. If we must. I think this is one of those cooler things they use on medical shows to transport donor spleens. What's it doing on the set of a cooking show? Some knowledge is better left unclaimed. This is quite realistic. Like that animatronic kid on the Cosby show. That's quite an assortment. They must have scoured every toxic waste dump in the state. It's like a scene from Heidi. How does that bird manage to stay still for so long? Hey Sam, can I? No. This fridge isn't even a fridge. It's a fake. That's enough lard to clog the arteries of a major metropolis. Or start a circus of grease squirrels! I rue the day you lost your NEA funding, Max. Welcome to Cooking Without Looking, the cooking show for the typical bachelor kitchen, containing no fruits, vegetables, or healthy ingredients of any sort. The show where we take a random assortment of condiments and barely edible items and create a meal within minutes. Filling in for Chuck Flagon this week, these guys. Just go with it. Oh, um, hello. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sam. It's great to be here. Not you, Buckethead. The audience. Oh! Greetings, worshipful fans! Remember, the only reason I'm on TV is because I'm better than you. We've got some furious cooking to do, so let's get right to it. What are we making, Sam? We're making a delicious casserole. Let's just go to our trusty ingredient rack and select some savories for our all-purpose thingamawatsit. 
It's a pot, Sam. Sure it is, little buddy. And you're a kettle. A fist full of squid tentacles. Ooh, that's my favorite western. Now do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And, through the magic of TV cooking showtime, ta-da! You've successfully perverted the laws of God and man. Oh boy, let's take it with us! Nope. Welcome once again to Cooking Without Looking, the show where we use absolutely no natural ingredients whatsoever and still make something you guys can choke down. Filling in for the inconveniently food poisoned Chuck Flagon, these guys! Thank you, and welcome to the show. What are we making this time, Sam? Well, that's all we have time for today. Goodbye, adoring public! Soon I will demand tribute! Welcome once again to Cooking Without Looking, the show where we use absolutely no natural ingredients whatsoever and still make something you guys can choke down. Filling in for the inconveniently food poisoned Chuck Flagon, these guys! Thank you, and welcome to the show. What are we making this time, Sam? A bunch of gunk in a dish. We'll just get some ingredients from the ingredient rack and add it to what we professionals call the yummying hod. Isn't that a pot? Max, we both know a pot is what you and I fight over when we play poker. This is the yummying hod. A pinch or two of wombat secretions. Make sure they're lightly damp to the touch. The wombats, not the secretions. We've already got that thing we made before. No! I ate it while you were looking at the ingredients. Now do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And, through the magic of TV cooking showtime, ta-da! You've successfully perverted the laws of God and man. Oh boy, let's take it with us! Welcome once again to Cooking Without Looking, the show where we use absolutely no natural ingredients whatsoever and still make something you guys can choke down. Filling in for the inconveniently food poisoned Chuck Flagon, these guys! Thank you, and welcome to the show. What are we making this time, Sam? Today we're baking a cake. Let's visit our rack of ingredients and add flavoring to the flavoring pail. I'm pretty sure that's a pot, Sam. Max, let's leave the cooking to me and the eating to you. A fistful of squid tentacles. Ooh, that's my favorite western. A pinch or two of wombat secretions. Make sure they're lightly damp to the touch. The wombats, not the secretions. A handful or two of buffalo chips. You really can't add too many buffalo chips. You want to use the sulfuric acid sparingly. It can easily overwhelm the other ingredients. And your taste buds, and your esophagus. Of course, you're going to want a few dashes of hair gel. Don't worry, bachelors. As long as you use it only for cooking, no one will think you less of a man. No more than a dash of uranium pellets. They also go great in Chex Mix. Of course, it wouldn't be real bachelor cooking without tweed. Bachelors, here's a tip. Tweed isn't just for cooking. It also makes a great toupee. A dash of pink mink oil is a must. Nothing says, I last ate real food in the 80s like the inclusion of something pink. Can we say enough about roofing tile shards? Obviously we can. Every chef has a signature ingredient that no one has ever heard of or used. Mine's MSG. If you put in enough that you feel a burning sensation in the back of the neck, forearms, and chest, you're just about there. You'll want to crush up some dried dingo kidneys. Come on, bachelors! You know you have them! Look under the sofa cushions! Of course, who could forget the asbestos sprinkles? This stuff isn't just for school lunches. Real kitchens use it, too. Don't skimp on the lard. That's right. If you take the lard out of lard ass, all you have is ass. Well said, Max. Every meal has to include some of the standards, like monk paste. Don't forget that saying. Monk paste for the taste, Pope vest for the zest. Make sure to include red dye number two. If there's not at least some possibility of malignant tumors, it's not real bachelor cooking. 
We've already got that thing we made before. No! I ate it while you were looking at the ingredients. Now do we broil it, Sam? Right you are, little buddy. Into the oven it goes. And, through the magic of TV cooking showtime, one gorgeous, delicious cake. Ready to be binged upon or shared amongst friends. Oh boy, let's take it with us! Hello again. Hi. What's that thing? I don't know. It was here when we took over the building after the dot-com bust. Is this thing on? Hungry? No. Who has time? Do you know anything about advanced analytical combinatorical wave particle physics? What are you kidding? Just checking. What am I? A charity? Sam, this is perfect. This photo is a capstone. It succinctly summarizes over 30 years of extraterrestrial-related photographic evidence. Sybil, that photo was a hoax. Exactly. I couldn't have asked for better. Now I can print the paper. Available at newsstands now. Hey, guys. We'll be back. Keep watching the supplies. Never mind. I don't! We're famous. Hooray! Can we begin misbehaving now? Begin? It's Sam and Max. I saw you on the telly. How do you watch TV from in there? I've got monitors you don't even know about. Hungry? Thanks. I just ate a hot dog. Do you know anything about advanced analytical combinatorical wave particle physics? Only what I read on the wall of the men's room. Uh-uh. Let me show you something. Stand back, rogues, ruffians, rubbish mongers! We want to buy something. Mm, yes, mm, uh, quite so, quite so. We come bearing one million American dollars. Now hand over the voice modulator. Blimey! Food stamps? I suppose I must accept them. Both the dash government conspiracy. It's hogwash! Complete codswallop! 
Here, then, is your chemical-based voice modulator. This is a helium balloon strapped to an inhaler. But it works! Trust me, trust me! Holy chipmunk, Ari is warbling out of a souped-up 78-speed turntable. It works! Thanks, Bosco! Let's do some shopping. Great! A little ketchup is always good on a cake. Hungry? Thanks. I just ate a hot dog. Where are we going, Sam? The TV studio. Goody! No thanks. How about some cake? Not hungry, thanks. No dice. Happy birthday! Oh boy! Birthday cake! That red frosting looks tasty! <laughs> Excuse me. Boy, that was really... Oh, uh, uh, really? Uh, uh-oh. Time out for number two! What? What the? Darn it! He better not be going to see Myra. Well, anyway, we can't wait. We'll just have to finish the show with only two judges. Whatever you guys agree on goes. Vote for me! So, Wizard's birthday is today, huh? See? Some people pay attention to these things! Oh, come on. I already said I was sorry for forgetting. I confess I don't really understand how you could forget Wizard's birthday. I mean, aren't you guys triplets? Technically, yes. Happy birthday! Yeah, yeah! If you'll excuse me, I've got some lines to color outside of. It's your life. Testing. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next contestant, Sam. I'd like to do a little song I call... Love Has a Thorny Backside. <coughs> Shiny like a new Mylar Balloon. She's at brunch today with some baboon. All the girlies hear me and they swoon. And let's hear from our judges. I admire your courage even more than your singing. You've still got my vote. Thanks, little buddy. You really nailed that high note. Whoa! And you're less sloppy than my brother is. You've got my vote. Hey! All of the remaining judges have agreed. We have a winner. No! Congratulations, Sam. Here's your recording contract. Ben Bottom Records. It's like a dream come true. Specs, I'll get you for this if it's the last thing I do! Right after I get back from Mount Rushmore. Rushmore? I'd better go after him. I just remembered. I have to feed my goldfish. 
Are we still taping? Uh, be sure to join us next time on Embarrassing Idol! The show's over. You don't have to be up there anymore. I know, but I'm waiting for random people to pass by so I can heckle the way they walk. Oh, Hugh Bliss, we've got something for you. No, 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 no gifts. All I need is love. Yes? Oh, you two again. Well, what is it? You've got the length of one commercial break to explain yourselves. Remind me what your requirements are for guests on your show? Of course, dear. I'll need to see your recording contract, a clip from your TV show, and some evidence of a juicy scandal. What if we have our own video game? Video games? Ugh, those things will stunt your growth. They're terrible. We do have a recording contract. In Bottom Records. Take a look. You should have us on as guests. I like my guests to be celebrities audiences are talking about. Have you been embroiled in any juicy scandals lately? Our landlady thinks I'm the one who broke the dryer in the basement. Come back when the media is talking about you. And don't forget to wash behind your ears first. Actually, we graced the cover of the current edition of the Alien Love Triangle Times. How's that for a scandal? You'll have us on your show now, yes? Oh, I suppose so. If only so I can talk about America's lamentably endless fascination with depravity. Yay! Naturally, I will expect you to be on your best behavior and agree with everything I say and answer every question I have and don't interrupt and keep your elbows off the table and use your indoor voice. What about... While you're on my show, you stay in your seats at all times. You do not interrupt me when I'm talking and you treat the audience with the utmost respect, even if you become less sure with each passing year that they deserve it. Now, I'll call you on stage in a minute. Gosh, Max. Celebrity is just a never-ending set of arbitrary goals one accomplishes to appease a dismissive and distracted, if not entirely absent, authority figure. I don't know if I agree, Sam, but I've begun my decadent slide into a depraved personal hell just in case. Give her a hand, everyone! Bessie Bovine reading from her new book, The Heart Has Four Stomachs, Ruminations on a Life in Hollywood, out now in all major bookstores. This microphone is starting to spark from overuse, but that doesn't mean we're ready to pack it in. We've got the stars of the not-quite-canceled sitcom Midtown Cowboys, who also happen to be the winner and judge of TV's Embarrassing Idol. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam and Matt. Hold the hayride, little pal. That bear seems more than slightly hinky, in the mesmeric sense of the term. Shadier than a fat man's ankles. Let's take it down like ducks in a gutter. Hold it! My guests sit at that end! But that bear has got you... Sit! We'll just sit where you want us to, ma'am. Lovely. What gives, Sam? Why can't we just grab the bear? It would appear that the laws of physics are different on the set of a talk show, little buddy. We're gonna have to play along. Sam and Max, you talented, hot new celebrities who've taken the entertainment world by storm. So naturally, we all want to hear everything about your involvement in the scandal detailed in the Alien Love Triangle Times. There's something you should know about that picture in the Times. I'm not sure I want to know anything more. Maybe you big Hollywood types thinks it's funny to flaunt your polyplanetary pickups, but the rest of us find alien love triangles, frankly, disgusting. But the photo is not quite what it seems. How so? It's not a picture of an alien at all. That's Hugh Bliss. Hugh Bliss? The highly respected founder of prismatology? Don't be ridiculous. Why, I've had him on my show before, and he certainly isn't green. What are you really hiding? 
How much I'm scared of being buffeted by another gust of Hurricane Myra? Flattery will get you nowhere, mister. I don't know about you, audience, but as a girl, I was taught that flattery was the worst possible way to blah, 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 yak, yak, yak. Blah, 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 yak, 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 blah, 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 yakity, 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 yak, blah, blah, blah. Got a second, little buddy? Now that we're big stars, I'd normally ask that your people call my people to set up a meeting. But since we're old friends... Blah, 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 yak, yak, We've got to stop this blah, TV blah, program. Blah, blah, blah. Stop yakety, it. Yakety, yakety, it's the greatest yakety, moment yakety, of my yakety, deeply yakety, superficial blah, life. Blah, blah. Nonetheless, blah, blah. we'll be trapped here forever if blah, we don't do something. Blah, blah, blah. Yak, Look, yak, unless yak, you take yak, out Myra blah, blah, or that blah, blah, bear, yakety, or both, yakety, yakety, you'll never yakety, stop it. Yakety, yakety, I say, blah, blah, relax blah, and enjoy blah, the blah, unreal, soul-hollowing ride. Blah, blah, blah. Yak, 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 yak. Blah, blah, blah. The real threat blah, blah, here isn't Myra yakety, at all. Yakety, yakety, it's that bear. Yakety, yakety, yak, blah, blah, blah. No, nothing that blah, cute should be allowed to exist. It has Myra in some sort of hypnotic thrall. You made that word Possibly, but that doesn't make it less true. Blah, blah. According blah, to the ultra strict blah, blah, rules of talk show reality, yak, yak, we're stuck blah, sitting blah, over here. At least it's comfortable. Yak, yak, True, blah, blah, but we can't blah, do much from here. Blah, blah. Celebrities don't always have to do things for themselves. They perform and have people do everything else for them. Not being able to get up and move around drives me crazy. We're on a talk show. Let's flap our self-important gums until the cows come home. Never mind. Blah, then blah. I shall return to the warm blah, womb blah, of manufactured blah, blah. celebity. I'm not touching that thing. I'd probably get shot. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. Blah, blah, Humanity's blah, not blah, safe yak, while yak, that mysterious yak, yak, little hypno bear is on the loose. Are we part of humanity, Sam? Not technically, but we're in danger too. Can't we sit over there? You'll sit where you are and like it, mister. Yes, ma'am. Blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 blah. Put that away right now. Blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakety, 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 then no. Blah 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 blah. Yak 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 yak. Bloody 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 bloody. Yak 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 Blah blah blah. Blah blah. Ah yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty scandalous affair of yours. I'd rather talk about our smash hit sitcom Midtown Cowboys. Okay, let's talk. You two have become the new breakout stars of a flaccid, dissolute sitcom in its final days. How wonderful for you. Thanks. We brought a clip. You certainly did. I had a chance to watch it, and I refused to show it to my audience. It has a shocking joke involving a cow pie. It's a sad commentary on today's culture when the cow pie, once a staple of the American diet, blah, 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 yak, 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 yak. I see why Myra only lets big stars on her show. They're easier targets? If you're big enough, there still might be something left when she's finished. Blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. I'd like to talk about me. I prefer my guest's naked egos to be just a little less naked, dear. Oh, absolutely, Myra. That's exactly what Reese Butterfingers told me when sniping river rats at Cannes. She thought I had the cool-eyed aim of a professional. Are you sure you wouldn't rather talk about your alien love triangle shenanigans? I'd like to talk about myself. And a project you're working on, perhaps? You said it, Myra. I am an ongoing project, like a golden calf or a graven image. I'll only rest once people are sacrificing their firstborn unto me. Also, I'd like to direct. Fame went to your head quickly, dear. It's a short trip. Are you sure you wouldn't rather talk about your alien love triangle shenanigans? Let's talk about you, Myra. Me? What could anyone want to know about me? Maybe they'd like to know how honored you are to have me, Max, brilliant actor and acerbic wit, on your show. Are you sure you wouldn't rather talk about your alien love triangle shenanigans? 
I'd like to mention my pal Sam, and something that happened the other day. Anecdotes about other celebrities, even ones as dubious as you two, are always welcome. Well, I was battering this purse snatcher with a broken parking meter and screaming, Die! Why won't you die? And Sam said, You crack me up, little buddy. The point being? I crack Sam up. Are you sure you wouldn't rather talk about your alien love triangle shenanigans? I'd like to say some more about our show, Midtown Cowboys. I would, too. It's disgusting how you openly mock the plight of Gallus American landlords. After all, wasn't it a chicken who fought at the Battle of blah, 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 yak, 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 yak? Blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. I'd like to sing a song from my upcoming album, Feathers and Furious Scribbling. I'm almost certain the audience might probably enjoy that. Howling at that drippy old hunk of moon. She's at brunch today with some baboon. And so I wrote this extremely catchy tune. Thank you, Sam, for putting the numb back in musical number. What a wonderful way to remind our audience that you don't have to be talented to be famous. And a perfect segue into my latest tirade about the lamentable state of modern popular music. I mean, blah, 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 yak, 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 bloody, 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 yakety, yak, yak, yak. Blah, 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 yak, yak. <clears throat> ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. I'd like to talk about that charming yet mildly insidious looking bear on your desk. Can I see it? I don't know, Sam. Can you? <laughs> may I see it? Please? No, you may not. And if I may say so, if there's one thing that grills my chicken, it's how our culture is in a state of modal decay. Can is not the same as may. Should is not the same as blah blah blah. Yuck, blah 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 blue blue blue. <sighs> Hopefully she'll be off on her tri-state nagging spree for a while. Blah, 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 yak, yak. <clears throat> ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. Where did you get that bear, Myra? It's funny you should ask, Sam. Funny in the way all inappropriate questions are funny. A relentlessly inquisitive culture created a blah, 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 yak, yak, yak. That woman cannot get off her high horse about anything. She'd need a parachute. Blah, 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 yak, 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 <clears throat> Ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. The bear's evil, Myra. Destroy it now. Mind your manners with my guests, young man. Kids today. Blah, 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 yak, yak, yak. Blah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> ah, yes. Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty, scandalous affair of yours. There's more you should know about that picture in the Times. What's that? It's not us. It's uh, our evil twins, Saul and Mark. I thought I was the evil twin. Sam, I refuse to let my low opinion of you curtail my disappointment. Did you really think anyone would buy such an unbelievable story? Is there a way to answer that without being lectured? No, there isn't. You know millions of Americans suffer from malevolent multiple birth sibling syndrome. It's no laughing matter. And for you to blah blah blah, yak yak yak. Blah 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 blah, yak. <clears throat> ah yes, where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty scandalous affair of yours. There's more you should know about that picture in the Times. What's that? It doesn't tell the whole story. There's someone else involved. Someone the picture doesn't show. How shocking! Who? Philo Pennyworth. As I'm sure most of you know, Philo Pennyworth is the actor who plays Mr. Featherly on Midtown Cowboys. And we happen to have him backstage. Let's bring him out.
Philo, give us your side. Is it true? Myra, please, of course not. I'm a veteran of the British stage. I'd never be caught cavorting with a dog, a rabbit, and an alien. It's so 1997. Yikes! I doubt we'll hear a more terrifying denial. This year, anyone who is anyone is all about birds of prey, ring-tailed lemurs, and Bigfoot. No one will ever take you seriously at the Globe Theatre otherwise. And there you have it. I'm so shocked, I'm going to talk for at least the next five minutes about blah, 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 yak, yak, yak. Blah, 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 yak. <clears throat> One of the soda poppers. Oh, my! Which one? Peepers. Really? Well, by amazing coincidence, we happen to have Peepers backstage right now! Let's bring him out! It's not true, Paul! All that me happened was they snatched my lyrics! I can't even imagine what horrifying act that's slang for. How are any of us supposed to listen to Burt Backrack being interviewed without blah blah blah, yak yak yak? Blah blah blah. Despite his earlier refusal to acknowledge it, Peepers. Peepers, come on out here again! Is this true? How many times do I have to say just snatched my lyrics? My mind reels at blah, 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 yak, yak, yak. Specs. Oh my goodness. Well, audience, we just happen to have him backstage. Specs, come on out here. What are they f***ing about? The thing and I the f instead of my brother. And to be honest, I regret it. You mean you wish you'd your own brother? Yes, I do. <laughs> At least he doesn't. I am appalled. What kind of... Why, I... In all my years, I never blah, 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 yak, yak, yak. I'm not quite sure what he said before, so I'll mention him again. Specs. Let's fuel my indignation and call Specs back out here. Why didn't I my brother? Sweet how can I hear something so blah blah blah, yak yak yak? Wizard. Well, that's certainly an interesting accusation. We happen to have Wizard waiting backstage. Let's bring him out. I have no what they all that happened was they gave me a ketchup cake! Oh my I have no idea what that even means. And it may be the single filthiest thing anyone said in my presence. I might be able to top it if you give me a chance. I prefer that you didn't. In fact, our country's shocking fascination with the double entendre is wrecking blah blah blah, yak yak yak. Blah. Despite your misinterpretation of his earlier claims, wizard. My disgust is only exceeded by my ratings. Wizard, come back out here. It's not true, Myra. They gave me a ketchup cake is all. Oh. That term grows more appalling every time I don't understand it. Why, blah, 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 yak, yak, yak. Bessie Bovine, our co-star on Midtown Cowboys. Oh, oh my. Audience. Shall we bring her back out again? Well, Bessie, what do you say to these allegations? Is that so? Bessie, shockingly, you're the only voice of common sense in Hollywood. You are to be commended. Why don't you relax with some sweet grass backstage while I browbeat my audience into blah blah blah, yak yak yak? Blah 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 yak 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 blah 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 yakety 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 y
Whoa! Careful there, Tiger! That was wonderful! I'm so moved I almost don't have a long hectoring screed in me! Oh no, wait! There it is! Thank goodness! Self-referential songwriting is a dangerously blah 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 yak 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 yak! Blah 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 yak... <clears throat> ah yes! Where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty scandalous affair of yours! There's more you should know about that picture in the Times. What's that? It doesn't tell the whole story. There's someone else involved. Someone the picture doesn't show. How shocking! Who? Despite his earlier denial, Philo Pennyworth. The only reason I'm participating in this farce is because it's great for ratings! Philo, come on back out here! Myra, I swear to you, I would never participate in anything so mundane and passé. It would ruin my reputation as a serious British actor. What can I say but blah blah blah, yak yak yak. Blah 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 blah, yak. <clears throat> ah yes, where were we? I think we were discussing the alien love triangle times and that nasty scandalous affair of yours. There's more you should know about that picture in the Times. What's that? There are still others involved. Incredible! Who? Bessie Bovine, our co-star on Midtown Cowboys. Oh my! Audience, shall we bring her back out again? At the risk of making the obvious comment, that was shocking! Is she breathing? A little. But the creepy teddy bear is toast. Nuts! I wanted to ask it a few questions, and maybe use it to hypnotize Katie Couric. Another glorious dream bangs its chin on the dirty pavement. On the bright side, the audience is free to go home. Oh, I was just getting warmed up. Do you think Myra will have us back on the show again soon? Um, speaking of unlikely, did you notice we just had two cases in a row involving hypnotic mind control? Complete coincidence? Yes, I think so. The cogs of the universe synchronize in ways we're not meant to see. Speaking of things we're not meant to see, there's a new restaurant at the zoo where you can eat what they feed the animals. Empty popcorn cartons and cigarette butts? And processed bread logs loaded with tranquilizers and antidepressants. Bread logs make me logy. Let's head back to the cooking show set and see if we can figure out how to make fried pork rinds. Okay, but I get the feet! <laughs>